there's lots of excitement in today's video. So welcome to episode 312. And yes, the intro was a little different. I'm experimenting a little bit. So let's get started. I am wearing my Forevermore poncho. Uh, if you missed the video on Wednesday, I talked about how to soften this using conditioner and it kind of went a little wrong in that um, my washing machine went through the rinse cycle and then the spin cycle and so I don't know if it washed out the, the uh, conditioner or not. Some videos I watched, they left the conditioner in and others, they washed it out. So I don't know, it did stretch out just a little bit because I hung it. Um, yeah, because it, it was just too big and massive for me to try to carry up the stairs to where my blocking boards are. And I have had stuff upstairs because it's not as warm. I have had things that are big and bulky like this actually mildew on the blocking boards up there. Um, and they're too big to bring down here and set up. So yeah, anyway, I hung it. It worked out fine. Um, I mean, it's a little bit longer than it was. And the sleeves, as you can see, I have like doubled over because they're kind of long otherwise. Do I like it? Yes. The one thing I don't know if I like the sleeves or not simply because if I'm working like this, you can see it kind of all bunches here where if, if I didn't have the sleeves and my arms were just sticking out like a regular poncho, I wouldn't have that problem. The itchiness is gone. It doesn't, it does not bother me at all. This part here is a little bit scratchier basically because it's garter stitch, not stockinette. Uh, but otherwise it, yeah, I like it. Um, if I made it again, I would not do the sleeves on it. So, um, just cause like I said, I, I feel like I turned my arm and I've got all of this coming with me. I do like the fact that it stretched out a little bit in the length in some ways because it covers, it covers the hips a little bit better. We need hip coverage. So yeah, that worked out fine. But otherwise I do like it. It is comfortable. It's warm. And, um, yeah. So if you missed that video again, you can click the link right here and that will take you over to it. I do have another finished object. I finished my crocheted cardigan. And let me hold this up. Let me find the right side here. Here we go. I will model this for you in a minute. Here is the front. And this is the lapel going here. And it ends down here in a sleeve or in a sleeve. Yes, it ends down here in a pocket. So yeah, now here is the funny thing. When I made this last time, I must have used a larger hook. This time I was using a 5.5 millimeter, which is a size I or letter I. Yeah, I, I tend to go by the millimeters. But anyway, it was a 5.5. I must have used a six six and a half or a seven last time because this is definitely smaller than the last one because it actually fits me the other one was huge but i used more yarn it's a good thing i had extra i went upstairs and looked through my yarn stash and i had three whole extra skeins of this i used a little bit of maybe about a third of one more skein to finish this off with the lapels so um yeah so I'm thinking I must have used a smaller hook this time than I did when I initially made it. I am trying out a little bit different lighting today. So I'm hoping it works better. I have an overhead light in this room and it made the top of my head look like a, like it looked, made it look white like I was growing skunk hair or something. So, um, yeah, I look like I had a big white streak through the head, but it, I really don't. It's just the reflection that was coming off. But my hair is a wreck today. I don't know what's going on with it. But anyway, that is my finished item, and I will stick in some video of me modeling it. So here is the sweater. Let me step back a little bit so you can see how far down it goes. It's right down to here. And here are the pockets. Actually, maybe I made this a little longer than the last one. 
because it does seem like it goes down, but it covers the hips, which is a good thing. And then it has the lapel collar here that I can turn up if I wanted to. Otherwise, it just runs down the sides and it ends right here as a pocket. So it does not have buttons. I could have put buttons on it, but I don't tend to button my sweaters anyway. So I just prefer to have them left open. And there it is. I'll turn around so you can see the back. So that is my cardigan. Now my work's in progress. First, I have this knitted scarf. This is Yakima yarn. It was sent to me by a yarn shop named Creatively Altered. I will put a link to that yarn shop down below in the video uh, the description box if you want to check it out. This is their crimson color and look how gorgeous that is. So I've gotten quite a ways on it this week. I believe there are 48 cable repeats, if I remember rightly, in the pattern. And then it has an edge here that is like a ribbing, and then it has ribbing at the end, and it has that repeat at the other end as well. This is super soft. Uh, the pattern I am using, I think it's just called Cabled Scarf. Um, I didn't bring it in with me, but it's a very easy pattern. It is free, but it is it was written specifically for this yarn. But when this blocks out, look how beautiful that is going to be. And Yakima yarn um, is by Plymouth Yarns, and it has yak in it, which explains why it's so soft. So it is a single ply yarn, and it is a tonal. This one is a tonal crimson. It does come in other colors. I like this one because you know me, I like red, so I am looking forward to getting this finished to be able to wear it. And I also meant to tell you with this, um, the Lion brand, I did find, of course, a ball band, so I can tell you what it is, although they don't sell this color anymore. This was called Barks. It was 603. So there you can see it. I went online looking for it and I cannot find this color anywhere. So I don't think they sell it anymore, which is a shame because it is pretty. It has some black in it, like little flecks of black in it, and like a maroon and this tan, which makes it very, very nice for um, wearing with tans or blacks, which is what I normally wear this with. So um, yes, now on to the, the next work in progress I have going on. And that would be my advent calendar shawl, and I've gotten quite a ways with it this week, too. I'm down to the last few colors, I believe. So here it is. Uh, since last week, I believe last week, I was just getting in through here. So I have gone up through these really pretty purples right here. I can't open it all the way up because it will come off of the needles. But there you can see the whole thing. So, um, yeah, let me show you how much I've got left in the ball. So you can see I'm working my way through some purples right now. There you can see it. So, yeah, another week or so and I should be done this, hopefully. So that's what I've been working on this week. What have you all been working on?
So I have some acquisitions. Uh, the first one is from one of you. I'm not going to say her name because I didn't know if she wanted it announced or not, but I've never owned actual clover hooks. The ones I have are these and they're, they are fake clovers. They are lookalikes. So I've never owned the real thing. And someone sent me this. This is a clover hook. This is an H size or five millimeter. So uh, yeah, let's open it together. And it feels very, very nice. And it has, um, let's see, where does it have the sizing? Oh, there's the sizing. Oh, and this is nice in that it has, it has the millimeter. I'm checking it against my fakies. Uh, the one that I have here that is a fake just says the millimeter size on it. This one has pressed into it the millimeter. There you can see the millimeter and the American sizing, which is an H. So it is an inline hook. And also the thing I noticed that's different is the fake one that I have, um, the back side of it right here is flat. And actually they didn't get it poured real well because you can see it's, it's a little coming out of this because that part wasn't done real well. I didn't pay much for them, so it wasn't a big deal. But this is in line, and this one is flat on the front, but the back is rounded, so it's a little bit easier to, it's not going to rotate on you as much. And it's it's very comfortable to use, so I look forward to uh, using this. I see some, some sweaters in my future that I believe we'll, we'll be doing with this size. So thank you. Um, you know who you are. I appreciate that. So thank you so much and it will be put to use. I also got an acquisition, which I'm not going to show all of it. I ordered 10 mini skeins, 10 mini skeins from an Etsy shop. It's called A Busy Life, and they sent me their business card as well as a progress keeper with a little snowflake on it. And it is all hand dyed yarn. And the owner is Nanette Bergenson. So there you can see that. And like I said, I'm not going to show the yarn because this is going to be set aside for Christmas in July. Because last year I did um, 12 skeins. And I did like the 12 days of Christmas for Christmas in July when we did Christmas in July fairies. So this year I'm going to be, I'm going to package these up into individual little packets and I'm going to be opening the 10 days of Christmas during July. So um, this will be set aside for July. So I'm not going to show you yet. You'll just have to wait and come back in July to see what these are. I did see them already, um, but by the time July comes, I'll forget what I've got. Uh, so yes, these will be put aside for July so yeah it's a coming it's a coming opening in a few months so those are my acquisitions I thought I'd give you a little update on what I have been reading lately uh, the last time I told you what I was reading I was reading murder she wrote uh, the killer in the court I had just finished um, muddled through which is a book by Barbara Ross and it is the main clam bake mysteries. These are all cozy mysteries. And so I have just um, had just finished that one. And I was working on Murder, She Wrote, Killer in the Court. I finished that last week. And it was really good. The author they have writing for Jessica Fletcher now. Um, it seems to be really good. They went through, they had one author for a while that was writing the books that they were just a little too unbelievable. So I really, I like the person that's writing them now because they're a little bit more realistic. So I did finish that. And now I'm, I just, I'm about uh, maybe halfway through a new series to me. And that's called Aunt Dimity. Now Aunt Dimity is a ghost. 
actually. Uh, it starts out with this, uh, the, the lady in the story lives in this Cotswold village. It takes place in England. Uh, she lives in the Cotswolds in this little cottage, you know, outside of the village. And this little village, everybody knows what everybody else is doing. And so the little village has gotten into metal detecting because the new neighbors moved in and all of the village was scoping out what was coming out of their moving van. So in the middle of all this, the owner of this cottage discovers a bracelet uh, hidden up in the attic of her house. And so she has a little chat with the ghost. Aunt Dimity lived during the World War II and during the Blitz. And so she is talking about, um, she talks about this bracelet and she wants to have the current owner of the house track down the man who gave it to her and pass a message on to him. So in this part of the book, she's still trying to trace. She knows this man's going to be in his 90s at this point, whether he's even still alive. But she's going back and going through Aunt Dimity's past, trying to find this former um, suitor of hers and to give him a message from her. So it's been really interesting right now because a lot of the locations that they mention are actual locations in England um, and in London in particular. So it's been kind of fun because I've been able to go onto Google Maps and actually look at the things that she's seeing um, in current day. So it's, it's kind of neat. So I've enjoyed that. This is the first of the series that I have read. Uh, there's quite a few books in this series. So yeah, if I find I, I really enjoy this, I will start at the beginning and work my way through. So that is what I have been reading. And there are links down below uh, in the description box. If you open up uh, my Amazon link and then look at the Cozy Mysteries, you'll see them there. I have a section for just Cozy Mysteries and I have another section that is yarn related cozy mysteries. So um, those are in there and you can check the books out from there if you're interested. So Wednesday's video is going to be about how I constructed this. I did not use a pattern. So I'm going to I've briefly describe to you on videos how I did this, but I'm going to go into a little bit better description. So if you want to crochet a cardigan without a pattern, you can do the same thing. So we're going to talk about how to make a cardigan without a pattern. So that will be Wednesday's video. Now I did want to give a shout out to a fellow YouTube channel. Uh, it's funny because I've had two different people contact me this week about this channel and tell me to go over and check it out and that, that um, yeah, that I might enjoy it. And I did. So I wanted to let you all know about it so you can go over and check her out too. It is called Stephanie's Yarn Escape. So I will put a link to it down in the description box so it'll make it easier. You just click on that link. That'll take you over to her channel. And I'm sure you'd, that she would appreciate it if you all stop by and give her a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested. I'm sure she would appreciate any new subscriber she could get. Speaking of new subscribers, we are only 30 people away from hitting our next 100 subscribers. And you know, every time we hit a 100 subscriber, I do a giveaway. So um, if you haven't already, please click that little red subscribe button down below. And if you give me a thumbs up, I appreciate that too. So as soon as we hit 4,200 subscribers, we will be doing a giveaway. I also have a big giveaway coming up. Um, I have contacted a company named Tamu, and I did talk about them before that I had ordered some clothes from them and I actually ordered some knitting and crochet supplies from them also. Anyway, they are partnering together with me and they sent me $40, up to $40 worth of uh, craft supplies. So they let me pick out what I could get. So I got a little bit of, of yarn, I got a little bit of crochet and a little bit of knitting supplies. And we are going to do a review and some of it I am going to be doing as a giveaway for you guys. So that will be coming up whenever the, the delivery comes in uh, from that company. But I've ordered quite a lot of stuff from them lately because they sell all kinds of things. And I've been really, really happy with them uh, so far. So yeah, I will be doing a review on, on what I get as soon as it arrives. Now it's time for... Now in our come and get it section this week, Knit Picks is running 
a red, white, and pink sale. Uh, it's up to 30% off. Um, I think the each different color has a different percentage off. So um, I guess you're getting ready for Valentine's Day. So anyway, it's a red, white, and pink sale up to 30% off. They also are running 20% off of their Comfy brand yarns. Uh, the link is down below that will take you right over to the to their website. You can check it out and go from there. There's no coupon code needed. You just click on whatever color or all the colors that are red, white, and pink, and you can choose from it uh, from there. Lion Brand is offering 30% off of their yarn and kits. Um, it runs through the weekend, I believe, and they also are offering five skeins for $30 of their sock ease, which would mean it's $6 a skein. Uh, the discount applies as soon as you put five of the sockies skeins in your checkout basket, your cart. However, however, Annie's is running a sale also on sockies for $4.99. It's a dollar cheaper. And uh, yeah, so you can, I will put the link to that down below too. But yeah, Saki's over there for $4.99. And with Annie's, you just click, look through their yarn or type in Saki's and it'll pop up. But it is running $4.99 a yarn. So, yeah. So Lion Brand Sale isn't as good as Annie's if you're looking for Saki's yarn right now. And then the last one is to check out Mary Maxim Yarns. Uh, if you go over to their to their yarn and click on the, the link, again, is down below. And if you just click on the lowest price first, they have a whole bunch of yarn right now for $1.99 per skein. So that is Mary Maxim. So those are ones to check out. So those are the sales that I am aware of right now. I will pass on any other ones if I find them. And I hope you have a great week. Thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And I will see you again on Wednesday. Bye, everybody.